If you happen to be in 2D continuous time, then there is a remarkable theorem that is helpful when you're trying to prove that there is a limit cycle somewhere in your system as opposed to trying to rule it out. This is called the Poincaré-Bendixson theorem. This is not the first time we've heard Bendixson, and it's not the last time that we will hear from Poincaré. Here is the theorem. If you have a forward time orbit of a nice continuous time dynamical system, dx equals f of x, you assume it's uh, continuous, all that good stuff. If that forward orbit lies within a closed bounded domain in the plane, then one of three things must happen. Either this is a periodic orbit in that domain, goes round and round, or it limits to a periodic orbit in that domain. That is, you have a limit cycle in there. The only other thing that can happen is that over time you limit to an equilibrium. Now there's a little bit of fine print in terms of what I mean by limit to, but let's just stick with a simple version of this for now. This is a really deep result. Are we gonna be able to prove this? No, no, we're not. But you can get the intuition for what is going on and maybe a little bit of intuition for what the proof is. Let's say that you've got some region, some bounded region in the plane, and you've got a forward orbit that stays in there for all time. So I don't know, pick a point and start there and then just go, just run around and you're doing your thing, but eventually you're gonna kind of run out of room. So what do you do? Can you cross where you previously traveled? No, you cannot. That violates the uniqueness of solutions. You can't do that. So you have to, you have to sort of straighten yourself out and then follow along somewhat parallel to a path that you've been before. Now you can keep doing this, just going around and around and around, and eventually you're either going to get really, really close to an equilibrium or you're going to accumulate on some periodic path. You're going to fall into a limit cycle. Now, this is not a proof, but this is the beginning of the intuition for how you would construct a proof, and that construction would have to use some topological ideas and use the topology of the plane very, very sensitively. This is something that only works in 2D. Notice we're saying that it's a subset of the plane, we're not going to be doing this on a torus or any other kind of two-dimensional thing. This only works in continuous time 2D. Well, okay, but so what? What are we going to use this for? Here's a strategy for finding limit cycles in 2D continuous time. Let's find a region in the plane where we can show that if you start on the boundary of this region, you, you get pushed in, you get sucked into this region, this trapping region. If there are no equilibria inside of here, and if whenever you cross the boundary, you're stuck in here forever and ever and ever, then Poincaré Bendixson says, you've got to have a limit cycle in there. Now it doesn't tell you where that limit cycle is, but it does guarantee that a limit cycle exists. And that's pretty useful. And let's see how this works in the context of an example. Again, 2D continuous time. Let's say dx dt equals 2x minus 2y minus 2x cubed minus 3xy squared. dy dt equals 2x plus 2y minus x squared y minus y cubed. What we're gonna do is convert this to polar coordinates. And in particular, inspect what is happening in the radial direction. This is gonna take a little bit of work. Recall from having done this in the past that to compute dr dt, we do implicit differentiation on r squared equals x squared plus y squared. That gives us dr dt is one over r times quantity x dx dt plus y dy dt. When I substitute in dx dt and dy dt as per the dynamical system as given above, then we get a really long complicated expression. But investigating that, we see a couple of things. There's a 2xy term on either end that cancels. 
there's a 2x squared plus 2y squared term, which if we put together is going to give us a 2r squared term. Writing things out at this point gives us 1 over r times quantity 2r squared minus 2x to the fourth minus 4x squared y squared minus y to the fourth. And now I'm afraid there's nothing for it but to actually substitute in x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and start doing a bunch of manipulations. I'm going to save that for you to do. And I'm going to tell you that what you get in the end is 2r times quantity 1 minus r squared minus 1 half r squared sine to the fourth theta. And now with that, we can build a trapping region. Knowing what we know about dr dt, let's evaluate this at certain choices of r. I claim that when r is sufficiently small, let's say r is 1 half. Then those higher order terms with the negative sign in front of them, they're really small, small enough so that the linear term dominates and dr dt is positive. Whereas if you choose r to be larger, sufficiently large, then those higher order negative terms dominate and dr dt is strictly negative, independent of theta. And what we have constructed is a region in the plane, an annulus, whose boundary is comprised of two circles. On that outer circle at r equals 2, you're getting pushed in. dr dt is negative. At the inner circle, r equals 1 half, you're getting pushed in. dr dt is positive. Combining this with the fact that this system has one and only one equilibrium at the origin, we have a forward invariant trapping region. Poincaré Bendixson says that there is a limit cycle inside of that region. It's really hard to see based on just the system itself, just looking at the equations. It's really hard to get this any other way. Now, of course, we could just simulate it, and when we do, we will see exactly where that limit cycle is. It's really prominent. It's really obvious. In practice, what you could do is take a look at a simulation and use that to try to predict where your trapping region should be. In this case, that works great. We can go back to earlier examples, such as the Van der Poel equation, where we noticed that there was something interesting going on there. It would take a lot more work to build a trapping region in that case. In particular, it's not going to be an annulus, but it is doable thanks to Poincaré Bendixson.